Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with Ben. Hey, hello. Hey, Christian. Nice things. It's uh, it's going well over here. So it's uh, thanks Good. for joining on your Friday afternoon. And as we get go into yet another weekend, it's uh, the community never stops. You know, <laughs> it's a it's a nonstop train to Funville. <laughs> exactly. That's a that's a positive way to 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 think about yeah, this stuff. You've got to be positive, well, haven't you? There's too much well, negativity in the world. Well, you think about the two. I mean, uh, you know, MVPs in general are just very gregarious, very community focused, outspoken, friendly people. And yes. one thing I always say is just, uh, well, first, let, you know what? Before we get in the conversation, why don't you introduce yourself formally? Yeah. Who you are, where who, you are, what you do? Who is this guy? Yeah. Well, it's it's an absolute pleasure to be on your show. My name is Ben Whitmore. I'm, I was recently awarded MVP in Enterprise Mobility, uh, literally, what are we on now, Ten, nine days ago. Uh, and it, and it's, it's been a crazy ride ever since. Um, you, may, you might be able to tell from my accent that I'm here in the UK. And so I've been, okay, a bit about me, I've been working in IT for 20 years. So I'm almost at legacy status. <laughs> so <laughs> not, not in skill, but in terms of man, he's been there a long time. And so I've, I've come in, you know, I started at the what I'd call the bottom, I, I knew nothing about IT and, and I kind of worked my way through. So I started building PCs, then I started chucking network cables into places, you know, cat, yeah. I think we had cat pull, five back pull, then it was pulling cable. Four. I have a friend yeah. that had a business and did some of that with him, and that's real world. I, uh, you, you cut up your hands pretty quick. Seriously, those are fun days. Yeah. Actually, there's a really scary moment when um I had to call through, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say this on camera, but I had to call through a loft space, and it was all big pipes and lagging, and it was above a school hall, and it's this tiny little thing you had to call through, and it's like a scene from Aliens, you know, where Ripley's going across the pipes and the aliens are rushing through, <laughs> and um. This stuff was lagged in asbestos, and, and I laugh about it now, but it's actually quite dangerous. And yeah. it was um, so it's like a mix from Aliens and Bruce Willis, where I had the cable between my teeth and I was crawling through this tunnel. So great memories of cable. Yeah, that, sure. I, I got got some stories and things from from that. Yeah, helping out. I was just doing my helping out with my friend's business, but yep, yeah, yeah, it's uh, well, it, it's it, I I know that. I'd love to hear more about that because a lot of people ask that question, like kind of what is your path into becoming an MVP? Yeah. But I mean, career wise, I mean, it's very similar. It's like you, you, you start out, you, you make connections, you just, you are open to learning and kind of go from there. So go, what, what was the rest of your path with your role? Well, see, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I left school um, and I went to work in the local supermarket just to get some cash. And then I became a fishmonger. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that got me into IT because I knew I didn't want to be a fishmonger <laughs> for the rest of my life. So, but those yeah, is, so that's not a common term <laughs> in, in the US and I've heard it. Like I usually hear it like in reference, like in Lord of the Rings, it was referenced as a warmonger, not a fishmonger, as you know, uh, someone who you know, chases after that. But what's a, so what's a fishmonger? Oh, this, it's just somebody chops up fish and sells it to people. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, so from there, um, I was really fortunate to go and work for a local company just to build PCs. And, you know, mm -hmm. and that's that's where my love really, the spark really clicked in. And I thought PCs, you know, IT is for me. So building PCs, doing the networking cabling with a local company, you know, I had maybe five, six years experience doing that. And um, it kind of set me off on my path, really. And then I moved into a local school, um, was looking after their network. And from the local school i then went to work for local government and i sat in local government for 14 years just mm -hmm. working my way up through the, As the different ranks to do and, and, <laughs> and, oh, roles, and but. I, when i when i started that job i said i'm going to be here for two years this is going to be yeah. a stepping stone and i'm going to move on um but 14 years later you know it's great and, and i met so many great people and um it, it gave me kind of space to breathe and grow because I guess in public sector, you don't have the same pressure as you do in the private sector. 
So I had that room to grow and improve, um, which kind of brings me, I guess, to where I am today. So back in March, I had the opportunity to, opportunity to join a company called Cloudway. And that company, for me, who was then just starting, you know, to look at enterprise mobility and Windows 10 and migrations and things, they were the kind of stars. So to have the opportunity to, you know, Ben, do you want to come and work with us? I was like, man, all you guys are MVPs. And there's just little old Ben from the UK. Um, but they never made me feel like I was anything less than them. You know, they they looked at my skill set, what I was doing in the community, because I was already blogging at that stage and, and doing events and things. Um, so I joined them and it's it's been a wild ride ever since, you know, from, from March until today. So joining a, an awesome company. So there's eight employees, all MVPs, you know, they're so good at what they do. Yeah. Um, to be in a team and working with people at that level and then to get invited onto the MVP program and to be accepted was just, you know, stuff of dreams. And because it's something I love doing. I, yeah. I love I love working with people who have that same passion, you know, the same drive to to work with technology to just make the experience for users better. You know, that's I, I don't get up in the morning and sit on my PC and have fun just to click numbers. You know, I think what's the point in this? And and if yeah. I can make people's lives better, that sounds a bit cliche, but if you put in all the work under the hood and then you see a really great outcome, that's that's where I get the love from. You know, there's uh, no, I think there's a lot to be said about that. It, it, uh, and I think that's one shift that has happened, shift in thinking uh, due to the pandemic is people have started to, in such a tight you know market now for 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 work. Um, it, you know, it really is the employee's world like you have your choice yeah. like if you are a if you're in a crappy situation with the bad manager or not you know it, you've got skills that you can go and market then there are opportunities that are out there companies yeah. you know my company we tons of hire we've we in the last 10 months we've hired over 400 people and it's wow. just it, it, we're just growing immensely but the the struggle what slowed us down is finding the right people with the right skills yeah and it's a tight market it it is, and it's like you said. There's there seems to be a lot of opportunities at the moment, and throughout the rough ride we've all had over the last eighteen months, that's maybe you know from our perspective in IT, that's a good thing that's come out of you know a good thing coming out of a bad thing, is that it's there is a lot more opportunity now, um, and you know everybody's moving stuff to the cloud, and <laughs> it's if if you've not started the journey, you, you're halfway through it at least. Um, well, it, it's not just about finding a job for the technical skills match, but you know where I was going is is, is uh, people are reflecting on what am I really trying to do? Am I am I passionate about this? Is it am I you know the right personal growth? Is it doing the right things for uh, for for my health for for the world for the the you know the economy to for for nature? I was like, what are the impacts out there? And so yeah. it's really allowed people to because we had extra time sitting at home uh, uh to think about what are we doing and why are we doing that absolutely and and the exciting thing is that i've seen a lot of companies now pick up the newer technology where they may have been a bit slow and apprehensive to to go into it before they've almost been forced you know and in a good way um because they're seeing a lot of benefit from it you know and and if if the IT teams are seeing benefit from it because they're getting people working from home, you know, that makes my job just awesome <laughs> because I'm doing something I love and they're getting something awesome out of it as well. And you no, know, and you're right, it's it's about the passion. Um and and for me coming into um the consultancy role, um to be able to work with like minded people who had that same drive and passion in what they did is kind of the icing on the cake absolutely yeah. you, you know there's something so, the, so my company there are five of us that are mvps and then three regional directors uh and so uh, it, it was actually it's a huge uh a part of my decision to join they were one of my clients i was independent until last december but was that because i knew the company you know worked with the company for years and I knew that they were very supportive of the community side of that and what that meant. Obviously, 
I have a job to do. I have my my com- annual commitments. I've got uh, like those things that I'm doing day in yeah. day out. But they also recognize and leave room for the community activities and yeah. even help with, especially if you can find a company that you know, occasionally I say, look, there's no like we're not there at this event when events are happening again. Um, you know, but we're not there, or we're not sponsoring, or maybe we're doing a digital sponsorship, but we're not there, but they may still cover my travel to go to this event because it is visibility. It is brand building for the company. There's yep. goodwill that's, that's developed. That's actually, that's, that's actually been a discussion point of, of like the value because a lot of community, uh, it's, it's almost, it's like a, it's a long play on marketing there may not be the immediate short-term you know clearly identifiable metrics out of you attending monthly community meetings or going to weekend uh, community events or even to the larger conferences yep. so how does your organization measure those things and look at those activities oh do you know what? they're so cool <laughs> we've we've um just brought in this concept of no meetings fridays and uh. I'll tell and yet you, here we are. No, uh, it's oh, uh, this is this is fun stuff. I, I know, you know? Is, I know yeah. <laughs> like I said to you before, I'm not having to cook the, my kids' dinner now because <laughs> I'm talking to you about stuff I love. So that's good. So yeah, we've got this concept of no meetings Fridays. So um, and this is the awesome thing. So you're absolutely right. I need time to grow and to learn and to play with stuff and to blog and do that stuff that gives me enjoyment to keep my spark and my interest. Yeah. Um, and especially with a family, I was doing that in the evenings and on weekends. And then I was thinking, well, how can I balance my time? You know, because I've got a young family who needs me. And so this concept of no, no meetings Fridays, we all block our calendar out, no meetings. And we are literally, we're working together on solutions, on blog posts, on community stuff. We're listening to podcasts, on trying to get through that stack of books behind me. And, and it's all about personal growth. And um, we, we're going to be measuring how that works over six months using Viva Insights. Um, and and hopefully it's going to be here to stay because I know the feedback I've had from the people I work with is is just awesome. You know, we, we're not spending the weekend evenings or the weekends sometimes that, on that learning process because we have to keep fresh, don't we? Yeah. If we don't keep fresh, Somebody else comes along and, and takes our job. <laughs> it's well, it's funny that uh, you know, in ha- having worked for uh, companies that um, did not allow for the community component and viewed it as competing with your time, like they they just weren't. Uh, you know, in, in fact, I was I had one company uh, that I worked for that that was uh, I, I would argue jealous of the community activities and and the executive team of the attention that i was getting uh, the recognition through that and was furious every time i did a blog post even on my personal blog that i wrote over the weekend in my time that didn't mention the company or one of our products really I was like yeah that's uh, kind of not I, the point yeah that that sucks a little bit doesn't it yeah. um <laughs> well anyway you i know, don't want to bring us i don't want to bring the vibe down on, on no let's that. keep the fire going yeah. Well, hey, why don't we go? So I always like to ask too, like, uh, kind of. So enterprise mobility MVP. Yep. So what are you writing about and talking about right now on that topic? Oh wow. Do you know this? This that category spreads. You know, so enterprise mobility. So I look at things from from the Windows 10 and device management through to identity and security, um, and kind of everything in the cloud that pulls that together. So. It's such a, a wide spreading category. Um, I mean, my my most recent post was we've started a we've called it the mega series on single sign on. So there seems to be this misconception that if you've got an Azure AD joint device, so these are people who are going cloud, you know, like in tune for management um, devices joined to Azure AD, no on prem. Yep. Um, there's companies out there who, who still want the users to be able to connect back to on-prem and access file shares, you know, and stuff, because there's some legacy workloads that are really difficult to move. And there's this misconception that you you can't take, a, let's call it a cloud join machine 
and with that identity access on-prem stuff without some really over complex you know engineering and that's just not the case so we've tried to demystify that for people well, if we can you historically know, hasn't series. that been the hasn't that been the case historically though i mean it, it was yeah, yeah i mean you have to do this i think there's this preconception and hopefully we're breaking this down you know so and there's a lot of people in the community singing from the same hymn sheet so if i've got a, a machine in the you know in the cloud then i have to hybrid join i have to join it to my domain to be able to access my domain res resources and, right. and that's just not the case you know so where where companies have like a, a domain and azure ad they normally have an ad connect synchronizing identities between the two yeah um and when you're logging on to an Azure AD join device and you get your primary refresh token, if that's a synchronized identity, you already have the necessary information about the domain. Yeah. So um, if you've got line of sight of your domain and your domain controllers, then the Kerberos authentication just happens. You know, it's it's like smoke and mirrors. So this this blog series with I blog on msnpointmanager.com. Um, so it's over there. It's it's going to be like a nine part mega series showing people how single sign on works, how single sign on works for Windows Hello for Business, and then how they can set up like a, a very basic VPN to get connectivity back to, to the company, you know. Um, you have so to yeah, send me so the that, links to that stuff I'll, in the blog yeah. post the profile that I'll in, So if anybody that's fi finding this video or listening to the podcast, if you go out to buckleyplanet.com, and there will be a summary blog post around this as well, and I'll provide all those links. So send me all the links that you'd like on that series. It'd be yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll send it across. It, it, it's, it's so much fun. Um, and actually, just, just yesterday, um, we were doing the Windows 365 community event, so, mm -hmm. and we were just – that was so much fun as well. We were yeah. just talking about Windows 365 and what's coming and all the new cool stuff and how easy yeah. it is and how cool it is. And So, yeah, so enterprise we, mobility, did, it gets spread like – Butter, you know. <laughs> you know, you might be interested. So I just posted um, today. So this, of course, uh, th this our conversation will go live in a couple weeks. Uh, but episode 22 of my podcast, which I'm doing weekly now, um, we talked about the impact of Windows 365, and not just of Windows 365, but the nature of software as a service and how that is impacting. Uh, customers, partners, and Microsoft on how they're delivering and what the market looks like. It's yeah. I mean, it's, 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 we're we're in an interesting world now where we have still a ton of on-prem and that that's alive and kicking and strong and Microsoft supporting yeah. them, hybrid of course, and then all of the cloud pieces, but also how we sell those, how we consume those different pieces. Uh, it, it's Absolutely. there's a lot of interesting things going on now. It is. It's, it's, it's like we said before, it's like being a kid in the candy shop. You have all this technology, but there's so many choices now. And the, the biggest challenge I've found is is kind of convincing people that it's OK to put that toe in the water and try something new. You know, yeah. have a look in that catalog of new tech that's available and just start trying it out. You know, even if it's in the lab, because I, th I think you'll find it will free up the way that your customers are able to access their PCs and data, you know, and, and yeah. this is coming off the back of the Windows 365 event um, and just seeing how simple it is to have that um, persistent PC in the cloud that is accessible from any device, any time, you know, I can be working at my desk in my office, go downstairs and pick up my tablet and carry on from the same PC, you know, yeah. that's just, so. Well, I'm just thinking of like given your background as well, and and I I didn't have a similar role, but was very worked very closely with the IT teams at a number of different companies that owned the the uh, you know the desktops that owned the the devices, and yeah. somebody new starting up, they needed a couple days to load the the new PC <laughs> or to set it all up, yeah, and constantly fine tuning things, and how different of a world that is now. Um, yeah. So where, I mean, especially with Windows 365, I mean, to have that control and not worry about, let Microsoft do the heavy lifting on the things, sure. the pieces that they own. Um, absolutely. So we so we had the, the concept of autopilot, which was literally take a machine off the shelf. You know, it's already registered to the tenant. The user switches the machine on and it's pre-configured. And, and that is awesome. You know, yep. 
we don't there are still use cases for task sequences and config man absolutely and and you know it's still a very strong product um but to be able to pick a, mach a machine off the shelf and just switch it on and you're there is amazing um and, and windows 365 just comes on the back of that as well that whole persistent experience where you're not having to build custom images or deploy scripts you know i hate doing stuff manually it has to be automated um and that's key yeah. absolutely key well now it's especially it's, it, it, how complex our worlds are uh you know the fact that we have uh you know the the different profiles built into our laptop so it's not just that it's it's being able to switch between the profiles i mean yeah. multi-tenancy how big of an issue is it's funny with some a lot of the multi-tenant issues a lot of the stuff it used to be that microsoft um they did not have them at high priority the issues that we're having because mvps and uh you know hardcore uh, uh you know consultants were having this issue but the vast majority of customers were not having these multi-tenancy issues that's not really the case anymore it's becoming no. very prominent no and so microsoft's had to address that yeah and literally i just fired my edge browser now and i've got about actually 7 million and 52 profiles <laughs> But it's yep. cool because those profiles contain a unique identity. So, so for me, accessing different tenants now is as simple as, you know, just switching a profile in my browser. Yeah. Well, so Ben, really appreciate your time talking today. Uh, folks that want to find out more about you or connect with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Yeah, so um, I blog at msnpointmanager.com. Um, you'll find me on LinkedIn. If you follow hashtag Cloudway or hashtag Team Cloudway, um, you'll see me pop up because we're doing so many cool stuff with those guys. Um, I'm on Twitter at ByteBen. Um, our DMs are open. So if you see anything I'm blogging about and you've got questions, you know, I'm happy to jump on board and try and answer those for you. Awesome. And again, I'll have all the links to all your social profiles. And I don't promote this enough, but you can go to mvp.microsoft.com, of course, and you can find any MVP. Uh, it's not good at finding like who are all the MVPs in the UK that are focused on enterprise mobility. Like you can't do that, but you can do keyword searching and of course name searching and find folks on there. And from your profile, click on and find kind of all of those main uh, uh, you know social pl platforms as well. It's it's cool. It feels like I'm walking on the shoulders of giants now. To see your name up there in MVP is such an honor. So. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's, you know, it, it's, there's, it's kind of a running joke when you describe it, like when you get renewed and stuff to say, I'm, you know, humbled and I'm honored and humbled or humbled and honored. And, and it's the same two words that everybody uses, So it becomes kind of a cliche. So try to find other words to describe it. But I mean, it is, uh, it's a, it's a great honor. I'm, I'm excited to be uh, in the community and get to meet other MVPs and find out about what you're working on. So Hopefully we'll see each other face to face at the next summit in That'd person. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Year. And yeah. maybe we can play bass guitar together or something. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> I know. I I should pan the camera over to you know it's gather, gathering dust right now. I, but yeah. we need an online jam, you know, MVP jam live. There you go. We've set the scene. <laughs> Let's make well, it happen. That sounds like a hot mess. Yeah, if we <laughs> if we open that up to others, but well, it's great talking to you and connecting with you, and we'll talk to you soon. You too. All the best.